All right, we are ready to go for our resident public speaker, Ophelia. Go ahead and bring the team <laughs> out on the field. Good to see you uh, in the already. Yeah, I just, just literally sat down, plugged in. Okay, so, wow, this is a privilege. All right, everybody, so here we are Wednesday. Let's take advantage of the day. It's been... Um, it's been a productive week, whether you've been thinking about work or doing work. Honestly, if you're thinking about work, you're thinking. Let's just get it out, out of our heads and just put it into action and get that momentum going. That's right. That's right. What time did you get to the office? Uh, right now it's 8.36. I got here at 8.34. What time did you drop the kids off? At 8, 8 o'clock, I drop off my daughter. And then at 8.30, I drop off my son. But I dropped him off early just so I can be here. At 830. Six. Beautiful, beautiful. I love it. Well, I appreciate it. Appreciate the momentum. Uh, thank you for being here. Thank you for bringing us out on the field on this beautiful, beautiful morning. I see some familiar faces that are old faces. Demi and Bledsoe, man, I've been thinking about you, bro. It's good to see you. Love you, man. I'm so glad that you're here. Huge contributor to our space. It's been a minute, big dog. So good to have you here. Good to see you. Did you guys move or did you guys get a new bookcase? Because I don't think I've ever seen that vantage point before. Oh, yeah. That's why I hopped in the meeting. I wanted to show off my new uh, my new bookcases. <laughs> nice. I love it. Did you did you move or is that something you had installed? Yeah, we uh, we moved from downtown. Finally, after uh, 10 years of being in downtown Oakland, we're uh, in East Oakland off of Outlook now. So a lot bigger space, a little backyard for the kids. So yeah, yes. Bledsoe's moved on up. I love it. I love it, man. It looks good. And that is, that's your realm, right? That's where you're going to do massive so thinking. Good, bro. I love it. Well, it's good to see you, man. It's good to see you. It's been a moment. So you guys, I have some thoughts for you. I have some things already queued up that I want to share with you guys. Today, I'm going to ask you guys some questions. I'm going to have you guys take some notes. And I'm going to have you guys be introspective as always. On Wednesdays, I always like to talk about the market, market conditions, what's happening, what's patterns. But also, I'm going to help you guys find and locate and identify ideas for content. There's tons of great articles out there. But what I want to do on Wednesdays is I really want to start aggregating these content ideas so you guys can say, ooh, I like that one. I like that one. I like that one. Um, somebody I recommend that you guys follow is Tony Knott. He's on the call today. Tony Knott's been doing some great market updates. Cool thing about Tony is that it doesn't feel like he's not in the state. He's actually in Denver, but he's transitioning to uh, back to the Bay. But when you see his content, he's constantly keeping you up to date about what's happening, what's going on, market stats, market updates. And remember what I said, you guys, if you don't start using those green screens and those market updates, then there's going to be a time where we just don't spend the effort, time and energy of creating those things unless there's a high attraction to those things. So we give you those so you guys can go out there and create really, really cool content. But if it's underutilized, then it's a waste of our time. We want to make sure that we're creating things that you guys are going to use. So Tony Not shout out to you. Love what you're doing. Love how you're creating that. Love how you're using the green screen. So let's do this, you guys. Quick question before we get rolling. Um, two questions I have on my notes here. First things first, what have you done? It's Wednesday, and it's very simple. It's been two days. You started this week on Monday. I felt like on Monday, we had a full stream of consciousness. There were some good things that came out of that conversation. My, my question first off is, what have you done and what have you created? Right, two days, now we're three days into the week. What have you done and what have you created? Can you look back and say, man, I've actually had some great momentum. I've made some great phone calls. I've made a video, whether it hit or did not hit. Whatever the case is, you made a video, right? So what have you done and what have you created thus far? Now, you can either write that down, put that in the chat, or be honest with yourself and have a truthful conversation with yourself. Because at the end of the day, if each of you were working a nine to five, and for the first two days, you chose to not show up, to not do your work, you didn't do anything, I promise you, somebody would come to you and be like, yo, what's going on? Because you're not working, right? You guys have to have that same level of pressure amongst yourselves and put that same level of pressure on your own shoulder. So what have you done and what have you learned? I want to, or excuse me, what have you created? I want to share a quote that I saw on V's page um, and I thought it was powerful. And so I'm going to share this with you guys before we get rolling into all of our content for the day. If you're not willing to learn, no one can help you. If you are determined to learn, no one can stop you right? And I want you guys to have that soak in for a minute. They, knowledge is power. I, I don't believe that. I believe that knowledge is power when it's harnessed and it's used. 
right? If you come to sessions, if you go to masterminds, if you sit in the groups, if you're in, you know, these women's group, these men's group, all these different things that are going on, and you're taking in information and you're not using it to your benefit and to help other people, then it's just a waste. It's just a waste, you guys. So find the opportunities to learn and to give back and to really, really dive into what you are are, are around. You guys, I'm hearing so much great stuff. I'm going to go to San Diego tomorrow to learn from hundreds and hundreds of people so I can fill my cup up to be even sharper for you guys. So you guys, listen, let me say that one more time. If you are not willing to learn, no one can help you. If you're determined to learn, no one can stop you. Oftentimes we get crippled by our own ego, crippled by all the things that we think we know, and then we just stifle our own growth and development. So get out of your way. Let's go ahead and go full tilt. So I read some articles this morning and I wanted to share what I read for you for uh, read. Does anybody know what city is ranked in the entire nation for the number one amount of millennial buyers in the entire nation? Anybody know what city? And it's not too far from us. Anyone want to take a guess? Just go ahead and take. Fremont, uh, Fremont you were close. I saw San Jose. San Jose, you guys. And uh, if you're attending Steffi and a couple other people's uh, millennial buyer workshop, you'll probably learn a little bit more about this on on um on saturday but what was the fifth or excuse me sixth ranked in the entire nation for millennial buyers san francisco san francisco hey. absolutely. <laughs> absolutely right so san francisco so here's the thing when you look at these numbers the real deal publisher report is that 63.9 percent of mortgage offers were for millennial buyers in San Jose and 59.19 was for San Francisco and they ranked number six. Why am I sharing that with you? I'm sharing that with you because I believe that is a great video hook. I believe that we are in an area that has produced the biggest tech platforms that this world will ever see right here within 50 miles. And if you are not speaking to that style of consumer, you guys are missing out of a huge opportunity. You, if you don't think that millennials are watching videos right now, today, this morning, while they're taking a shit, while they're having their coffee, you guys need to wake up because millennial buyers are the ones that are looking at us at the high. Even, even if you don't think people are watching you, I promise you, someone's going to surface and they're going to say, you know what, Tony, I've been watching your videos. Now it's time for our family to buy and I wanted to call you because I see you all the time, right? People are watching you guys. They are watching you. They want to tune in to the daily sitcom of Cortez. They want to tune in to what's going on with Dominique. They want to tune in every day to say, what's the guru got? And rather, whether or not they are responding to you, they're laying in the cuts and they're watching. And when it comes time to purchase a home and they have to see this person they've been seeing constantly or somebody that just popped up and has no videos, I promise you, they're gonna choose the guru. They're gonna choose the guru because she shows up and she creates content and she creates things that are visible. So I wanna share those thoughts with you. I wanna share some slides with you. I got a few things queued up. You guys, we talked about this a couple months ago, but I actually wanted to share with you this Gallup poll. A Gallup poll rates different organizations and different professions throughout the United States of America now, fortunately for us as real tours, we ranked above um, car salesmen. So congratulations. But what we ranked right below or right above was um, lawyers. And we're talking like ambulance, chase, ambulance chasing lawyers. So when we look at this, and I just, I, I think this is really, really glaring. And I'm going to share with you in a moment why I'm bringing this up. When we look at the average here, the average, if you see here, real estate professionals are down here. like. We are so middle of the road, below average from a consumer rating. You can see here what was low, and then you can see here what was very low. I'm actually going to drop these links, so don't worry about trying to get all this information. The point is, unfortunately for all of us, consumers don't rank us that high. Why? Because people have not done the best job in educating consumers. You guys, when I tell you that education for consumers is the number one thing, making sure you're creating content that educates some consumers, helping them know exactly what's happening throughout the transaction. This stuff, you will hear over and over and over and over again, because this is our responsibility to increase these rates 
to be looked at as people that are like doctors, like nurses. Look at nurses. Nurses are the top out of every single category, right? They're trustworthy. People know what to expect, or they at least have an idea. There's there's this disbelief with us. There's this disbelief with us. And so it's your opportunity to go and change those things. So I wanted to share this with you. I'll put the link down below. That way you can look at this gal poll. I thought it was really, really profound to see it and look at it and to say, you know what? I personally will take the responsibility to help elevate those numbers. A couple other things I want to share with you guys, and I'm going to turn the microphone over to you guys. Steffi, you'll love this. You guys, this article about San Jose um, leads the nation millennial buyers. You can find this on The Real Deal. You can also find this in Slack. This is a really, really powerful read, and you have to ask yourself, knowing that this is the highest amount of buyers that are out there, you have to ask yourself, is your content really aligned with that style of buyer? Or am I creating stuff that might not hit? So you have to really look at it, analyze it. I thought this was a really good article. I'll share this link with you guys as well. Another thing, there was a survey that was done, and this was done right at the end of the year. And it really talked about the predictions for 2023. It broke it into different categories, and I'll show you some of these categories right down. Cool. So it takes you through different um, categories and survey sections. So how would you characterize your current local housing market? You got California, LA, Sacramento, San Diego, San Francisco, and it really breaks it down. Now what's happened is that the market has shifted. So some of these predictions and ideas and surveys that were done, I believe that this has changed dramatically. So what I want you guys to do, you know, what I encourage you to do, push you to do, implore you to do, is go back into Slack. And I want you to read stuff like this to start forming your own opinions and then be able to see what are the patterns and how things have changed in just the last couple months. In 2003, I expect my market will be, is it gonna be a seller's market, a buyer's market, a balanced market? Try to get an idea of where we are and where we're heading because I promise you this business and this market has changed dramatically and it's gonna to continue to change. So this article also lives in Slack. A couple ideas that I wanna share with you guys and I think this is good for your content. What I did here is I just pulled up the Redfin blog. I've been diving into this blog and I find it to be really good reading material. Now. What you'll do is you'll see the section for buying a home, selling a home, renting a home, home improvement, life and style. And there's another one for finance and then local insights, right? What I want you guys to do is I want you to peruse this. And I want you to go in and find these things that maybe spark some interest for you to go and create some dope content on. I pulled up one here. 22, let me go back to it. 22 Experts reveal 22 ways to bring a touch of luxury into your home. The things that were said in this article are simple design ideas, aesthetics, things that you could do to just bring a pop of color, using gold, using fixtures like this and accessories to make a statement in your living area. There's all kinds of things that you guys can do. What I would do is say, hey, five things to add a touch of luxury to your home, right? Five things to give your living room a sense of pop whatever it is, I found there to be so many cool things in this article that you guys then can take, put in your own voice and news jack this and create something that is yours that people say, Ooh, Otis, thank you for that. I didn't know. Hey, here's some trends that are happening right now. Here's some color patterns that are hitting right now. Here's uh, Kelly Moore's top color picks of the year. The list goes on and on. You guys get the point. Um, this one, how to keep a house clean with kids, 22 expert tips. If you guys have kids, you know that you'll clean the living room and an hour later, every single toy, truck, car, dinosaur, puzzle piece is everywhere, right? You know it happens. And so this would speak to the people out there in the world that have kids. You guys get the point, you know where I'm going with this. Local insights. Where are the parks? Where are the restaurants? Where are the walking trails? What is going on, you guys? The list goes on and on and on. I want you to never feel like you have writer's block, creator's block. There's so many different things for you guys to be able to tap into, but you have to spend this time reading and filling your own cup. That way you can spark something and be like, ooh, 
I actually like that. I'm going to hijack that. I'm going to repurpose that. And I'm going to put it into my own voice. Because a lot of the videos you say or you see or create have been done by someone else. You just did it a little bit better. Because none of this is videos, you guys. None of this. So now what you do, Otis says, God, I could take this and turn this into a really, really dope piece. And it's my style and it's my way and it's the way that I want to do things. So you guys have all these different categories to go through. Now, obviously, it's up to you whether or not you're going to do it. I want to give you guys ideas. When we come together on Wednesdays, we're going to talk about the market. But I also want to give you guys ideas for content so you can go out there and say, hmm, how can I really, really flip this? If I was Steffi, I would be using the shit out of this for my event to re-promote it, getting ready for our Saturday Mimosas and Millennial event. So we have about... 35 minutes of mic time. What I'm going to do is I'm going to call on five people right now. And what I'm going to ask each of you to do is give us a high level update about where your market is, what you're seeing, what are the patterns. If I had never met you before, uh, look at, oh, hold on, look at Vanessa Yepes' background. That right there is actually something that was spoke about in that article about going and buying different frames and having a focus wall in your house. I spent tons of time on this. Look at Mareka. Look at D Damien. Look at Maria. Look at Vanessa, right? Look at where, where Dominique is. Like this here is a big deal. But anyways, I, I saw that because Vanessa, I love your art and what's going on there. So what I want to do is I want to go to five people right now and I want you to give me a high level update. I'm a consumer. I don't know shit about your market. What's going on? What's happening? What are you seeing? What's the patterns? And give me a quick market update date snapshot in your own words and so if i don't get the five i'm just going to randomly pick the five would anybody like to volunteer to be the first one to give me a quick update about what is going on in their market or just keep it back in. exactly so colette yeah you have a focus wall which is black and your mic it actually has a theme to it but i like that who wants to be somebody that raises their hand and just gives me a quick update? I want to hear stream of consciousness. Let's have the conversation about your respective market. And if nobody raises their hand, obviously, I'm just going to call on you guys. But who wants to be the first one to, uh, to provide a market update for the market they serve to the rest of the team? Who wants to be the first one? Going once, going twice. Who's going to raise their hand? We're going to get to five. Cool. Dominique, you're going to be the first person up. So Dominique is also an appraiser. So I think that she has a unique vantage point about what's actually happening in the market. So Dominique, if you can grab the mic, share with us what is actually happening in the market, trends, patterns that you're seeing for the market that you serve. Dominique Curtis, let's put you on the spot first. Let's hear it. Let's go to you. Hello. Hi. Um, okay. Um, what's going on in the market? Sorry, I've had a bit of a crazy morning, so I feel flustered. Um, but I'm, I'm actually starting to see um, contract prices. So I'm, I'm coming in value um, over contract price. So it's like it's we haven't caught up yet. So first we were under it, then we were meeting it, and now we're coming over contract price for value. And so um, that's actually good for our sellers. And um, it's a good thing to take on your um, on your listing presentations because it's showing the seller like, look, this is still your time. Don't wait. Let's get ready to go. So that's the trend that I'm seeing. I'm seeing that um, prices are starting to rise again um, in most cities. And I can't specifically say all. I've just been saying from Concord. Um, I did one in um, Fremont. I also did one in um, San Leandro recently, and Oakland yesterday. So we're starting to see prices like really just kind of go, go again. We're not seeing nobody really um, lowballing. We're not seeing as much concessions anymore. Um, and so that's um, a really good thing for our sellers. So Dominique, in the last, let's say 30 days, how many appraisals have you seen come under value? I haven't seen any come under. Good stuff. Good no, stuff. And typically, what markets do you generally serve? Is it all East Bay? It's all Contra Costa and all Alameda. Beautiful, beautiful. Yeah. Really, really important stuff to hear, you guys. Let's go to Otis, and then I need three other people on queue. Um, Joel, and it's crazy because I know, based on where you're at, are you in Emeryville? 
I'm not stalking you, but are you in Emeryville? No, we're in, we're in Pleasant Hill at the Hyatt House. Oh, okay. I knew it was a Hyatt house. I yeah, yeah. Was... <laughs> All right. I only stay at Hyatt houses just like you. <laughs> I am a big fan of Hyatt. Sorry. Otis White, let's hear from you, big dog. Give us a quick market update. You guys take notes when people talk because this is how you're going to have better communication with your consumers. Otis White, hit us, big dog. Excuse my background for not being as fly as others, <laughs> but um, I'm predominantly in the Solano County area, but I have in the recent 30 days shipped markets to out here in East Bay, predominantly Hayward area. And it is a complete fucking madhouse. Um, I'm predominantly seeing price reductions in Solano County, seller credits getting paid, uh, sellers paying for repairs and pretty much it's still Christmas time, some places out there, Sassoon, Fairfield uh, and somewhat of Vallejo. Uh, but coming out here to Hayward now, I feel like a fish out of water. Um, don't really know any homes really in the area of what they're going for. So I had to do a lot of homework before submitting a couple of offers that I have been doing uh, literally two, two a week with one client. We've lost out on four properties now just because of not really knowing the market and people are still coming stupid over asking over here. Like we threw 25,000 and it wasn't even, we were still at the bottom low end of, of, of the offers. Uh, so also doing the homework too on calling them back. Some do have contingent offers. So uh, my client's dream home is actually option number two right now. And we currently hold a $50,000 offer over asking price, which offers aren't due until Tuesday. Uh, and George made a good point. Listing out uh, listing agents out here in Hayward uh, and pre pretty much San Leandro at East Bay uh, don't answer their fucking phones. And had I not known this last one, um, it was their really dream home, uh, had reports and everything. And if he could have had a good five minute conversation with me and picked up his phone, we probably would have won this property. So uh, just doing a little bit of more homework, knowing the comps. And I am kind of uh, a little bit on edge to see what these appraisals come like if we're going to be throwing so much money out there like that. So knowing mm -hmm. the market, doing your homework. And and um, like I said, uh, thank you for the uh, post, Elias, and whoever shredded it up and made it look really nice. Uh, doing your homework, knowing what you're getting yourself into and uh, us as agents coming together and figuring out ways of making terms more stronger if you don't have the money or whatever we could do as agents to better serve our clients. I think that's what we should really be focusing on. Uh, I will be out here in Hayward, hitting Oakland and Hayward heavily now. Uh, if anybody wants to meet up and start to see what we could do to make offers stronger so we can get more escrows on that leaderboard, I, I, I'd definitely be open for that. I love it. And and uh, we have a couple of hands raised. Um, v just raised her hand and then Dominique. Um, but does anybody, and I'll come to you right next, Dominique and then V, does anybody have specific data from Hayward, if they specialize in that market, it's a great opportunity for you to share, hey, this is what I'm seeing. Also, Otis, what I would do is there's tons of new developments in Hayward. Now, whether or not your client has even mentioned it while in route, hey, I want to take you to a couple places just so you can see new development, put that in your rotation as well. Just take them out there, that way they can see, because Sometimes it's a game changer. They have no idea what they could get and how fresh and new everything is. So I would put that in your rotation because Hayward has tons of new development. We got one in closing today uh, right there next to the Soho office, man. That's right. <laughs> That's right. So Dominique, and then we'll go to V. Let's hear your contribution to the conversation. I was going to touch on um, when you're looking in a certain area, um, talking to Otis, um, it's really good, especially when you don't know, um, when you haven't done too much in that area, to search the criteria, whatever your clients are looking for, like about the size house they're looking for in the price range, and then go to the sold comps and get your list and start looking at um, list price sell price ratio and then seeing how much above, like 103% above, or is it at 100% if it's low? If, if it's below 100%, that means they're coming in under um, list price. So then if it's going above 100%, then that's over list price. And then you kind of gauge your clients like, okay, if this one over 103%, this is a 105, let's try to come in at, you know, come over 104%. So that's a good way that I found to be um, helpful in my reports. Love um, also, talking about markets, San Jose is crazy. So I know like kind of everywhere market has shifted a little bit, like especially the end of last year. However, I just did a um, appraisal in San Jose and it was a small three to about 1500 square feet and completely, um, completely original came in at 1.1. 1 .1. 
just a small ranch style house. And the other ones, when they were fixed up, same, same model, same everything, they were coming in around 1.4. And this is just like a three, two house, one story, you know, 1500 square feet. And so the market in Fremont is like madness. So when we had our Dublin listing, it was listed at 1.4. All of our, all of the buyers that came to look at it, the serious buyers, they were coming from the San Jose Fremont area because it's so crazy out there from Silicon Valley that the market is just so high, even for houses that are like completely original needs help 1.1 million dollars. It's crazy. Mm. It's bananas. Mm. I love it. And, you know, it's also it's also important to understand, like, where are the trends, where are the patterns and where people are going to? Uh, for example, I live in River Islands. I would say 75 percent of the people that are moving here are coming from Fremont. We met a family who 35 friends and family members came out here to River Islands at one time and purchased houses at one time, 35. And they don't even live here. They don't even live here. Right. But they're saying when I retire in 10, 15 years, that's where I want to be. So understanding like also where people are going to. So really good stuff. V, you had your hand up and then I'll come over to Alejandra in just a moment. V, what was your contribution on the conversation? Oh, um, I was, I'm getting ready at the same time. So I'm sorry, my camera's off and it was an accidentally uh, raised hand, but I'll just share what I um, recently just shared with a client interested in Fairfield. So his budget is 650. That's what he's pre-approved for. So what I told him was right now, the median price in Fairfield currently is 675,000. We do um, have about 107 active listings in the area. There has been 12 new listings in the last five days. And then um, median days on the market is about 48 days um, of the homes um, being on the market. And what we also found was back in January, the, the numbers were also a little bit lower in terms of prices. January 2023rd, the home prices were actually down 2.2%. And back in January, the median price was 553000 So definitely now March we're seeing that the median price has gone up. Wow. I love this. I love this. Uh, speaking, like hearing her speak, she understands her market. And V, for the people that don't know about Solano County, can you give us an idea or an average of how many new developments um, are, are offering homes right now in Solano County? I know there's- Yeah, I um, right now, new developments in Solano County. I know of the new uh, One Lake, um, that area, but I haven't went past- Fairfield. So I only know of the one lake in Fairfield. I've been kind of focusing a lot more new developments in like Rio Vista and okay. Antioch right now. Um, but I've just been kind of sharing those types of um, content on my page for those that are interested in new developments. And the crazy thing is that they're all offering some type of incentive. Um, for example, the Rio Vista one, there's a specific area in Rio Vista that is offering a $30,000 incentive for um, new homeowners. And you don't have to be 55 plus or over to buy that specific area. You just have to have someone 55 living there later. It's kind of different. And it was something that I learned new, but Rio Vista is um, predominantly a 55 plus community. But that was interesting to learn about if you have any investors looking for a new development kind of in the middle of Fairfield and Antioch. It's a great area to um, buy a new development. Love it. I love it. And I see people dropping links. Um, I'm going to I'm gonna come to Vanessa in a moment. I'm going to come to uh, Vernon in a second. But Alejandra, um, V, thank you for that. Thank you. Thank you. Alejandra, let's hear from you. Um, hey, guys. I'm also getting ready, so I look funny. <laughs> so good morning. Um, yeah, actually, Rio Vista, there is somebody right now who is looking for an open house person on Sunday. Uh, I was going to do it, but I'm not able to do it anymore because I'm doing somebody else. So if somebody is looking for Lisa, drop it in the Slack. So if somebody wants to. And uh, yeah, so actually, uh, I wanted to point about Hayward. I was, I was yesterday they were there and I went to visit a new construction property uh, right in front of the office of the Hayward office. And there is this new uh, American builder opportunity. And the properties over there, the condos are starting around $800,000 and go up to a million. 
But what I found interesting about this is if somebody has like an investor, this is a good investment opportunity for somebody um, because I thought, well, they're um, they actually willing to let you uh, buy what the, you know, the joint homes, the, the model ones and rent it back to them. So if somebody who ha has an investor, that would be a good opportunity. So I kind of wanted to, you know, Hayward is not my specific market, but like uh, that's something I learned yesterday. So I wanted to share with you all. Perfect. I love the contribution. Thank you. And and listen, you guys, brand new to the team. She is um, relatively new to um, real estate, but raised her hand and got involved. So shout out to you. Vernon, let's hear from you, big dog. What are you seeing? Give us a quick market update from the things that you're seeing. You just talked about Solano County. So tell us from your vantage point, big dog, what you're seeing. There's a lot of new developments happening in Solano County. Um, <clears throat> TriPoint Homes, of course, has developed a few phases at One Lake, but they've got a new development off Columbus Parkway in Vallejo that uh, they're literally in phase one. They're, they're projected to have their model homes constructed by Q2, Q3. Um, and there's one in Rio Vista, as V spoke to, but also in Vacaville. So new developments are what I'm really pushing in Solano County. I'm seeing the market trends are different from city to city within the same county, right? For example, I've got a client who's pre-approved for 575, first time home buyer. I'm very interested in Su Soon. Now what we're seeing is Su Soon, properties aren't staying on the market very long in Su Soon City. Where on the contrary in Vacaville, I'm sorry, Vallejo, it's about 45, 50 days where we still have the opportunity to negotiate concessions and credits. Um, there's a property that just went on the market in Susun City again um, yesterday that has an open house this weekend. And it's not forecasted to be on the market very long for two reasons. It's priced correctly. And something about Susun City is actually really attractive to first time home buyers. I don't know if it's the affordability, if it's the location, but in Solano County, I'm pushing for the new build just because of the incentive packages for the for our for our buyers, particularly if we're going through the lender that's working with the developer. Um, yeah, man, so it's two ends of the spectrum. You've got the new bills with hell of incentives. You've got different cities in Solano County where properties aren't staying on the market very long. And then you have some where there still are on the market for that plus 45 days. And um, for, so for those first time home buyers who really need those concessions, that's kind of where I'm focused on is, is those properties there. I love it. Do you have a dog eating a chew toy right now? Say it again. Is there a dog eating a chew toy? <laughs> no, man. So I, <laughs> I have these birds oh, okay. that post on this telephone pole over here, bro. <laughs> they were just waiting for you to get on the mic and start <laughs> Bro, they go crazy. These freaking birds. I, I sometimes I try to shoot them with my BB gun, but then you know I don't want animal control called on me. <laughs> All right, hey big dog, I appreciate you. appreciate your contribution. Great stuff. Let's go to Damien. Let's go to Cortez, and let's uh anybody else that serves a different market. Um, but that was funny. I thought that was like a, the dog, like chewing the damn chew toy. But uh, Damien Bledsoe, let's go to you, and then let's go to Cortez. Um, I just uh went to a kid's birthday party over the weekend and uh the the dad of the birthday girl was a uh a prospective client we were looking for um investment properties and uh he uh my bad got a notification but uh we had put in a couple offers on a multi-family back in december november and uh he just wouldn't come off the price that he was thinking that the property was worth and I was trying to give him outlook like hey once things kind of turn around the market you're going to be more than okay if uh, you just sit tight and his intention was to hold on to the property for years anyway and uh, he wouldn't listen to me and wouldn't budge off of his price and so when I just seen him over the weekend he's like man that place only went for a million fifty and I was like yeah I tried to tell you we could have got that you know, if, if you would have went up $50,000 and he was like, yeah, man, I'm kicking myself for not doing that. And um, it just really resonated with me because our clients didn't necessarily want to listen to us when things were down and they were a little trepidatious and, and nervous to make a move um, in the past six months. And now we can kind of use that as leverage going forward. Like, hey, 
things are turning around. Values are coming back up. The competition is out there. You got to look at all these people at these open houses and how many offers homes are getting. It's right back to where it was when, you know, before you started. So you can kind of use that to your advantage. And I'm trying to do that now with current clients is just telling them, hey, things are picking back up. So it's probably better to move now than to wait because you'll be right back in the position like Otis was talking about of, of getting outbid by all these other people. So you just, um, again, use what's going on to our advantage to, to help people get off the bench because, you know, they might've been scared over the past few months, but if they keep waiting, they'll be back in that place where they weren't competitive in the first place. That's right. That's right, man. Really, really good contribution. I love it. Great to see you too, man. Great to have you here. Cortez, what's your contribution, big dog? Um, I was going to say, like, for uh, Solano County, and in particular, Vallejo, it has it stayed competitive throughout the whole, when, when the down market was coming. Um, I still was competing with offers, especially in, like, the 450 to 550 range or 600. It's, it's very competitive in Solano County. So you're still fighting multiple offers throughout the whole uh, downturn. People were still putting in multiple offers in Vallejo. Mm, mm, I love that. I love that. Vanessa, I see you here. Um, different sweater on today, though. It's still, still cozy and warm, though. But Vanessa, you dropped the link. Tell us a little bit about that, Cortez. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful contribution. Let's hear from you, Vanessa. Evo. Good morning, everyone. Um, as you all know, I do live in Lathrop. And Lathrop is still a developing city. Um, when I moved here in 2018, we got our first property was 382. It's now valued at close to 600,000. So that's a story I've been telling people. It's like, it was a hell of a struggle. We scraped every penny we got together to get that house. But fast forward, we're now in our second property. But um, the link I dropped down there, um, it's funny, I'm talking about this is because everybody's always trying to time the market. For me, it's just get in where you fit in. Um, and if a new home build is for you, if you're literally, you know, pulling all your money together, um, go to the new builds because you get in there, you don't, you know, you have your builder's warranty, you, you know, you have that peace of mind versus trying to move in somewhere and then trying to figure out if you have enough money to fix anything. So the link I dropped down there is a new home source. So if you go in there, you can literally, you know, type in your city and new builds, whatever new build is either coming on or is already ready. Um, it's all going to be right there. I live by that um, almost like a, as if I'm searching on the MLS, but per new builds. <clears throat> and what's really uh, sad about this is the price may show one thing, but always do your due diligence and go in person because over the last three days and even today, I have to go back out to these new builds and every day in, um, incentives are changing, prices are increasing. Here in Lathrop alone, within two days, um, Stanford uh, Crossing has gone up 5K in price. So that's where we're at. Competition, yes, it's back. We're not seeing wait lists um, like that anymore, but definitely no more uh, quick move and readies. Everything is building out um, September, October now. Beautiful, beautiful. So you guys, um, these are these just got finished a couple months ago. Um, these are some of the most beautiful properties in this whole entire area. So use this as a reference. I appreciate you dropping the link. Um, this is actually, I haven't seen this site before, but what a really, really great resource. And um, you guys, if, if you have people that are thinking about getting out of the Bay and going you know, over the Altamon, um, this is definitely a, a top choice for people. It's named the number one uh, master plan development in California. Um, and this is years, years running. So good stuff, Vanessa. Love it. And congratulations to your family. <laughs> Thank you. And really quick, guys, on the new home source, you can actually make it so that it's your face, your information, um, as if it's a landing page for yourself. So that's a really cool website. Um, and yeah, thank you, guys. I love that. And so so let's build off of that. So we talked the other day, we had a small little mastermind about um, it was a social investigation, social scope. Um, one of the things was having that in your link tree. Right. If you have a Koji, a link tree, milkshake, whatever that is, it has your resources, the ways to get in contact with you, how to book an appointment with you. But also, if you can, like Vanessa said, put your name on that, have that link in there for 
all Bay Area or all new built or whatever you've uh, categorized that as, they can go there and search. And then it's like, wow, this person is a wealth, a wealth of information. So I appreciate that knowledge. Great stuff, Vanessa. Great link. Appreciate that. You guys make sure to grab that link from the chat below. Use that to your advantage. Um, Maria, can you just give that damn dog a kiss? All that dog wants is a kiss from you. He will not leave me alone. Hey, hi, Gizmo. You're not giving him attention right now. You're talking about All right, let's do this. Let's move around the bay a little bit. I want to go to Sophia. Sophia, I, are you driving? Are you able to contribute? I want to hear a quick update from you or from Chris uh, Barsenis up in Sacramento. What are you guys hearing? What are you seeing? And give me some market updates from that end of the far bay. Is what, we call it. Uh, what are you guys seeing in your market? Chris or Sophia? Going once, going twice. All right, cool. Chris and Sophia, we are moving on. Um, let's go to, where do we have? Let's go to San Francisco. And then, um, Steffi, I want to come to you in a moment. Um, Tony, not rapid fire, big dog. What are some patterns you're seeing right now? You did a market update. Share with us what you're seeing. Um, well, I'm basically, you know, looking at um, the spe specific places in San Francisco, um, because that's where I happen to be doing a lot of calling. Um, and uh, what I'm and specifically, that's like Pacific Heights, lower Pacific Heights out in the sunset. Um, and I mean, just in a nutshell, things that are priced right, um, are just are flying, I think, um, off the, the market. Um, and I've seen a lot of homeowners just from my calls, um, be interested and in, uh, in knowing, you know, having an interest in potentially selling and knowing what their home is worth right now and wanting to, you know, have those conversations um, much more than I was anticipating, for example. Um, so I just, I mean, that's it kind of in a nutshell. Good. I love it. I love it. Yeah. Keep on producing these market update videos. They're really, really good. Steffi, Thanks. I'm going to go over to you. I know that you're driving right now. Let's check your audio, but you're doing an event this weekend for uh, with multiple people, mimosas and millennials, millennials and mimosa, whatever way. I'm sorry if I'm messing that up. But um, what is some information that you feel is going to be powerful for you to share with that demographic of buyers? And that's who this um, <clears throat> who you're wanting to come to this event. So tell us. Yeah. Um, can you hear me? Oh, well. Good. Loud and clear. And if it gets choppy, okay. if it gets choppy, I'll have you cut your video. But for right now, it sounds good. Okay, great. Um, in regards to our event this weekend, I think um, some of the more important information that we can share is that, like, even though we're, you know, some folks are younger, we can still purchase a house depending on our situation. And lots of people are just not aware of that. They still think that they need to put twenty percent down. They still think that, like you know, if you don't put 20% down, then the PMI is incredibly high. Well, and that's not really the case anymore. So we just want to take it upon ourselves to educate folks who are around our age, because like it is still a possibility. Even if you don't have two years of work of experience, if you went to college, that's still considered as something towards your loan program. So we just want to continue educating people on the possibilities that are out there, as well as like the down payment assistance programs, especially with the California Dream for All that's coming out later this month. Beautiful. Love it. Great stuff. And, and super excited for you guys' events uh, or for your event this weekend. Great stuff. Way to take action. Chris Barsanis, you are back, big dog. I want to hear from you. Give us a quick update of what you're seeing in the market. Veteran in the business, worked with hundreds and hundreds of consumers. What are you seeing right now, big dog? Um, yeah, what I'm seeing right now is um, new home builds um, lowering their incentives, giving like a flat fee and not a, not like three two and a half percent. Um, home, there's no more moving ready homes They're pushed out to like the winter. Um, as far as um, volume open house, I'm seeing um, you know minimum 15 groups come in, which is pretty substantial compared to um, a couple of months ago where you'd be lucky to have two groups. Um, you know, with these high rates, um, it's kind of, people are just kind of, kind of stuck in not knowing if they want to take action, but you just got to keep uh, relaying to them that right now is the time to take action because in the spring and when people, when kids are out of school, you're going to have more competition. So it's, um, mainly, mainly, um, I'm seeing, a just a balance in the market. 
it's kind of like, you know, people, the buyers that are out are serious and they want to buy. People are on the fence need to be um, kind of convinced that they need to take action. So, um, yeah, that's what I'm seeing currently. So, Chris, let me ask you a question because every market obviously operates a little bit different. Are you guys in Sacramento seeing more non-contingent offers or is that not something that you guys see in your market? Um, I'm seeing people putting, um, still doing their um, inspections and um, not releasing everything. So okay. it's, it's more like a, a balanced market, but, you know, the rates being at seven is what's kind of giving people that, you know, little um, trying to not, not want to act. So it's just you got to get them off the fence. Okay, you got to have the conversations. Yeah. Because I, I know Carmen had mentioned yesterday that she wrote an offer. I think it was in, hey, it was her largest deal ever, 1.1555, I think it was the number, if I'm not mistaken. But she had mentioned that. It, it was a non-contingent offer and I'm hearing and I'm seeing more of that happening. And so I was just curious. So good stuff, Joellen, let's go to you and then we'll go to Mitch. They'll start to come full circle on the conversation. Yeah, I have a listing in Davis um, and it's been on the market for two weeks now. And I have about four offers and a couple over asking. And then I have a listing in Camera Park that's sitting been sitting since November. Um, and then I have another listing that people are going crazy after um, in Camera Park. And then I know that the new builds in Folsom, they're not giving any incentives, incentives at all. They're not lowering anything because all the buyers are coming from San Jose, Dublin, Fremont up here. So it wow. just depend, it depends on the house. Really, it just depends on the house. I think. So, so, so what is your expert opinion for the, the house that's sitting and not selling and moving what do you think you know what it there's no bedroom on the first floor it has stairs mm -hmm. it's right next to a top rated uh school so it just needs a family that wants to go to that school you know it can't suit a multi-family generation it can't mm -hmm. suit a senior it really needs just to be a family with kids that want to go to that school right there so wow okay good stuff good stuff appreciate the update mitch and then we'll close out with jeff mitch what is your contribution to the conversation big dog thanks for being here good morning all i just wanted to touch base on what chris uh, was saying earlier about uh, the the sacramento region market the tri-county areas in uh I, I get a lot of my information my stats from uh an appraiser slash blogger up here ryan lundquist he's phenomenal and dominique if you've never heard of him you should probably look him up he does a lot of stuff in the bay area too a lot of graphs a lot of uh, stats but uh what i want to touch upon was that in january uh he he noted that uh there were 47 percent of all the sales in, in the area were multiple offers and in february i haven't actually seen the figures for february's numbers but they were uh i heard from a colleague that they broke the the 50 percent mark uh of multiple offers on everything and we don't have a lot of mark we don't have a lot of uh uh, inventory here. And so you're going to see more of that coming up. Uh, and uh, the days on market is coming down. So we're, I mean, we have a real opportunity here um, in, in terms of uh, our buyers, uh, but sellers are, are reluctant. I mean, unless they have a reason to leave the state or downsize or maybe upsize, they don't really have a reason to sell uh, when they're, when they've got a beautiful uh, interest rate from, you know, five years ago. So that's what I'm seeing. Good stuff, Mitch. Love it, man. Love the update. Appreciate it. Jeff Phillips, let's bring us home, big dog. What are you seeing? Give us a quick snapshot of what your vantage point of the market is right now. Yeah, so I was going to talk about uh, the Hayward San Leandro. It's absolutely true. It's nuts out there. Over asking 14, 18 offers, no contingencies, escalation clauses. But if you can talk to your buyers about like, hey, if you want solid neighborhoods, nice little uh, areas, but a little bit further up north, like Pinole. Um, So I we wrote multiple offers in Hayward, got beat out, got beat out. Just talked to my buyers about like, hey, you know, it's not going to add too much to your commute. Would you guys would be open to exploring these neighborhoods? First offer accepted. So we're, we moved and pivoted to Pinole. Um, we also moved and pivoted to Concord. Why I like Concord is because I call it the epicenter of the Bay Area. You can get over to Hayward, you can get to Oakland, you can get to all those places, 20, 25 minutes, San Francisco, 30 minutes, San Jose, 40 minutes, Vallejo, 20 minutes, 15 minutes. So like we started to look in these other pocket neighborhoods that still have good rated school systems, all those benefits, but it's less competition because in that Hayward, San Leandro, you will have to 
do everything that we did in the wild, wild west of those COVID times 2020, you're going to have to do all those things still. But there's other pocket neighborhoods where you can still get at ask price. I didn't go above ask price, anything like that. We came in at ask and we got to keep our contingencies, even if they had reports to. So, you know, little things like that have helped. Man, and congratulations. So you got your offer accepted, you said, right? Did, it, did I hear that correctly? Yes, sir. Offer accepted. Awesome. awesome. Congratulations. So here's the thing, you guys. Like, when you're talking, before pandemic, right, people would move maybe a town over. Well, since pandemic, obviously, consumer behavior went everywhere. Counties over, 50 miles, 40 miles, 20 miles, right? So when you're hearing these stories from your team members, start, like, putting that in your your catalog files, right? So, oh, you're talking to somebody like, hey, listen, if we were able to go 15 miles up the road, you know, you might have a better opportunity and start educating them on what's happening in the surrounding outlining areas. Really, really good stuff, Jeff. And so the idea behind this is that we're collecting different ideas, different thoughts, different data points. So you're even well, even more well prepared for your consumers when you're having these conversations. So you guys, I thought you did an amazing job today knowing your market. If you spoke on the call today, it tells me that you have a full understanding of what's actually happening in the market. What I want to push everybody to do that did speak and the people that listened to it is go and jack some of this information, right? I gave you some sources today. I gave you some thoughts, some ideas. News jack, take that information. Like, hey, guys, I want to share with you some uh, an article I read today. I want to share with you a resource. I want to share with you some things that are happening in the local market that are going to impact you as a buyer. This is good information to share with the buyer. And so the idea is, content ideas, share about the market, what's going on, hear this high level data, and then go out and do something about it, right? Go and make a MailChimp today, or go make an email to your entire sphere and be like, hey, you guys, five things that you need to know about what's happening in the marketplace right now. Um, so you guys, great information. Um, George, we're closing out, but big dog, what is your contribution? I see you online. Let's hear from you really quick, and then we're going to close out the sesh. Yeah, um, so kind of just wanted to add in what you were saying is just keeping kind of what's going on in the market. And I think one of the biggest things that continues to help me personally is my inventory sheet. I mean, it, it just amazes me that I have been checking this data Monday through Friday. And even as I'm looking at it, it's amazing to see in the last year and a half that since I've been doing this, especially in Hayward, this time last year in Hayward, there was like 120 active single family homes on the market. As of today, there's only like 56. So it's really interesting because while everyone's saying like, oh, the market's going to crash, I'm looking at my data and now I'm telling my, my buyers like, actually, like right now is a pretty good time to buy because while everybody else is like kind of out and um, kind of putting their search on pause, you can kind of swoop up some of this properties at a good deal. And it's kind of like what Jeff was saying with some of those cities that he's looking at inventory or looking at properties in. I mean, I'm looking at San Leandro and San Leandro has like seven active homes. Mm -hmm. So the price of homes in San Leandro are of course going to go up because there's lower inventory, but you definitely like one of the things that I use this sheet to tell my clients is that it really depends. You have San Leandro set in mind, but you might end up in who knows Antioch because there's over 300 active single family homes on the market. And not to mention, you're going to get more uh, home for your buck and you're going to get a bigger yard. So definitely I, I encourage you guys, if you guys can start one of these Excel spreadsheets and use it for yourself and your clients too, because this saves my ass when I go into buyer consultations and share the data with clients. Love it. Can you uh, show us an example of your spreadsheet and how you use that or put that somewhere for us, please? Um, here, here's the thing, um, George, if you can, send it to Judith. When we upload this to, um, to YouTube, we'll just put the link down in the uh, notes section down below. Um, love this. Really, really great contributions to everybody. Okay. It's officially 930. So we're going to cut out, but you guys, thank you at the highest level for all of your contributions today. Joellen, crush your event today. I'm so excited for you. I'm actually heading to Sacramento and then driving uh... in the Bay area, but crush your event today. You guys, as always, keep it moving towards your dreams, goals, and vision. I appreciate every single one of you. Have a wonderful day. Hi, who's with you, Joellen? Hi. Rachel. Hi, Hi Rachel. Hi. Good to see you guys have fun today. 
Hopefully Thank I'll you be, so much. I don't know if I'll be able to, but go and crush that. Happy show. International Women's Day. Woo! Happy International Women's Day. You guys have a wonderful Happy day. Thank day. you. Bye, guys. Peace. Bye, everyone. All right.